Picture this, you're flying along, having a great day. You decide to climb to a higher altitude. You add power, pitch up, and the altimeter doesn't move. VSI is stuck to zero, and the airspeed indicator is going down. What's going on here? Well, you've experienced a failure somewhere in the pedostatic system. And if you can't identify the issue, you're going to have a pretty bad day. In this video, we're going to talk about how the system works, its potential problems, and what to do if something happens. And at the end, we'll even explain the best way to avoid these failures entirely. But first, what is the pedostatic system? Well, to understand how the system works, we need to take a look at two types of air pressure, static and dynamic. Without an understanding of these pressures, you won't be able to identify the failures. Static pressure is caused by the weight of the air molecules in the atmosphere pressing down on your body. We measure static pressure with a static port on the side of the aircraft. Static pressure is used in the airspeed indicator, the altimeter, and the vertical speed indicator. Dynamic pressure comes from the relative wind. Have you ever stuck your hand outside of a car window? Well, the force of the air against your hand is the dynamic pressure. Now let's talk about the first instrument, the airspeed indicator, or ASI. As the name implies, it measures airspeed. Now it does this by reading dynamic pressure and it uses a neat little trick to do so. It compares the pressure from the pitot tube and the static port. Now the pitot tube measures both the dynamic pressure in the form of ram air and then also the static pressure. The total pressure is made of the dynamic pressure plus the static pressure. Because the pitot tube provides total pressure and the static port provides static pressure, then the airspeed indicator can subtract static from total pressure to get dynamic pressure. Now notice the drain hole in the back. It prevents things like water or debris from getting stuck in the pitot tube. Remember this, it will come up later. The airspeed indicator is also the only instrument that relies on both the pitot tube and the static port. Next up is the altimeter. It measures your altitude above a reference point by comparing outside air pressure to the pressure inside of a diaphragm. The outside air enters the static port and then fills up the altimeter seal chamber. But unlike the ASI, the diaphragm does not receive any other input. Instead, it is actually set to a default pressure of 2992 inches of mercury, which is the pressure at sea level in standard atmosphere. As the aircraft climbs or descends, the static pressure increases or decreases inside the instrument. Now, it creates a pressure differential between the altimeter chamber and the diaphragm. This makes the diaphragm move and then in turn provides altitude information. Now there's one more instrument left before we discuss the dangerous ways that they can fail. And that's the vertical speed indicator or VSI. It tells you how fast you're climbing or descending. And here's how it works. The static pressure enters the diaphragm using the pressure lines. The inside of the diaphragm has an unrestricted opening and then the VSI case has a metered opening also called a calibrated leak. When you climb or descend, the static pressure will change immediately in the unrestricted opening. Inside the VSI case, the pressure will take longer to adjust because of the restricted opening. The pressure difference causes the diaphragm to move and in turn provides us with the vertical speed information. So now that you understand how the system works, let's take a look at how the instruments misbehave when things go wrong. Please, please pay attention at this stage. This may save your life. Now let's go through three scenarios that cover every failures that you may encounter. In scenario number one, the airspeed indicator drops to zero, but the VSI and the altimeter are working. So what happened? Well, this could be a blockage in the pitot tube. The ram air cannot enter the pitot pressure lines, but the drain hole is still clear. The pressure in the system drops to the ambient pressure, and then the ASI is gonna fall to zero. Here's the next scenario. You're in a straight and level flight. You decide to accelerate, so as you increase the power and maintain altitude, you notice that the airspeed indicator doesn't move. It's stuck at the last reading until you change your altitude. You also notice that when you climb, the indicated airspeed goes up and when you descend, it goes down. Now this points to a blockage in the pitot tube and also in the drain hole. The dynamic pressure is constant because it's trapped. Only the static pressure changes with altitude. If you see the airspeed rise, your instinct is going to be to reduce the power. But since you're climbing, the airspeed might already be too low, which, well, could lead to a stall. This is the perfect example of why it is so important that you quickly identify these kinds of failures. So what could cause these types of blockages? Well, icing is the most common, and that's an easy fix. If you see visible moisture in flight, turn on the pitot heat. The pitot heat is a system that heats up the pitot tube to avoid the buildup of ice. But there's a catch. You have to do this before the ice builds up because the heater will take time to melt the ice. Now I know what you're thinking. Why not just leave the pitot heat on all the time? 
Well, this will cause an unnecessary strain on the electrical system, and it can also make the pitot tube incredibly hot. Turning it off when not needed also prevents the heating element from wearing out. And here's the last scenario. Let's see if you can figure this one out. You climb or descent, but the altimeter is stuck in the last reading, and the vertical speed indicator is also stuck to zero. What do you think is blocked? Pitot tube or the static port? Well, in this case, it's the static port. The pressure in the static system becomes trapped when the port is blocked, so it remains constant. This affects all three instruments, including the airspeed indicator. When this happens, the altimeter freezes and the ASI begins giving false indications. If you climb above the altitude where the blockage started, you're actually flying faster. And when you're below that altitude, you're actually flying slower than your ASI is telling you. Now, this seems like a really bad situation, but there is a solution. If the static port is blocked, you can use the alternate static source. This lets the pitot-static system bypass the static port, instead uses air pressure from the cabin. The readings won't be as accurate, but hey, it's better to have a less accurate altimeter than a frozen one. So how can you avoid these problems in the first place? While icing is the most common reason why you may encounter a failure, the pitot-static system still faces other threats when your aircraft is on the ground. Blockages by dirt or dust can happen if the aircraft remains parked for a long time. Insects or animals also love to build nests inside these areas. This even happened to our own airplane, and if we hadn't caught it during the pre-flight, it could have caused serious issues. And that's why a careful pre-flight is so important, and so is the post-flight inspection. Covering the pitot tube after flight is essential, even if the aircraft is parked in a hangar. It takes less than 10 seconds, so there's really no excuse not to do it. But blockages are not the only thing to worry about. Outside pressure and temperature changes also affect your instruments. So to learn more about high and low pressure system, check out this video right here. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.